Bangor. From the great north woods to the rockbound coast and streaming live in HD worldwide at foxbangor.com, more people choose Good Morning Maine. Today on Good Morning Maine, a woman accused of killing her infant child pleads guilty to manslaughter. Plus, lawmakers are considering a bill that would ban the sale of flavored tobacco throughout the state of Maine. And it's an effort to help Maine teachers keep up with the cost of living. Good morning and welcome to Good Morning Maine. I'm Emma Smith. And I'm Craig Colson. Thank you for joining us today. We'll have those stories and a lot more coming up today. But first, a check of the forecast. And the forecast looking pretty darn nice at this point. Yeah. Um, we'll have some clouds today, but we'll also see some sunshine. Things are warming up. And then we're so expected to have a nice Easter weekend, followed by some above average temperatures. Right. We just so got to get through today. This is what we've been looking forward to all winter, a lot of us anyway. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Devin Biggs has all the details. And thank you very much, Craig and Emma. Happy Friday. Your first weather forecast sponsored by the More True team of Better Homes and Gardens Real Estate. They work throughout the state of Maine serving both buyers and sellers with a focus on the greater Bangor area. Where he's got things rolling out there this morning. We have a wind advisory posted across some parts of the state. This will last until later this afternoon at about 2 p.m. Wind gusts up to around 40 miles per hour or so. Will be possible, though, as we'll be watching for some gusty winds and a system that will be passing through. Otherwise, so along the shoreline as a result of the winds. We have some more alerts issued. Gale warnings posted through Saturday morning at around 2 a.m. for this little shade of pink right about in there. Maybe a little bit purplish as well. Small crowd advisory until 2 a.m. as well for everyone else. So, again, once we head towards later on this afternoon and parts of tomorrow morning, things will start to relax. On land, though, we don't have any precipitation moving through. The northern parts of the state might notice a few snow flurries today, but everyone else, once you get closer toward Bangor, will not see much of anything. They'll be under a part cloudy sky for us today so a mixture of clouds and sunshine and just the wind that we'll have to deal with a lot of the activity it's further down to the south this is kind of a second little weak wave of energy and most of this will stay further off towards the north future cats for today show some of those flurries further off towards the north i don't think they'll reach as far as south as it might indicate but we'll really start to clear out later on tonight so our early forecast for the rest of the morning and afternoon period showing a mixture of clouds and sunshine and yes windy as well temperatures in the 40s your full five-day forecast is coming Coming up, Craig and Emma. All right, thank you, Devin. We'll look forward to that. In today's news, a Massachusetts woman pleaded guilty to manslaughter in the death of her infant daughter in Aroostook County. Baby Jane Doe was found in a gravel pit 37 years ago. 58-year-old Leanne Daigle of Lowell, Massachusetts, was arrested last year after police cracked the case thanks to years of police work and advancements in DNA technology. Her name was Leanne Garrett at the time. She was 21 years old and claimed she didn't know the child's father. Police were alerted to the grisly discovery in December. On December 7th of 1985, after a dog dragged the newborn baby to a home in Frenchville. Detectives tracked the dog's path to a gravel pit where the baby had been born and abandoned in sub-zero temperatures. The death remained a mystery for decades until Daigle's indictment last year on a murder charge she has since pleaded guilty to the lesser charge of manslaughter and will be sentenced at a later date. Maine's highest court heard arguments from a man appealing his murder conviction. Thomas Bonfanti was sentenced to life in prison after he shot three people to death and wounded another in Down East Maine in 2020. He now claims his constitutional rights were violated. Devin Dagnall has the story. Monday morning, the Maine Supreme Judicial Court justices heard arguments for the case of Thomas Bonfanti. Last year, Bonfanti was found guilty of murder, aggravated murder, and elevated aggravated assault and sentenced to four consecutive life sentences. Recently, Bonfanti's case was granted an appeal. He is now being represented by attorney David Paris. We had limited questions on appeal. I think we dealt with them pretty well. I think the state has its own good argument. And again, uh, I would impress that the... That the uh, Justice has asked some very good, uh, compelling questions, and we'll see where they come uh, with the written decision. Paris argues this case isn't just about his client. He says it's about constitutional rights. Well, the arguments before the court, law court today really resolved around uh, Fifth Amendment rights, the right to remain silent, and the, the right to not invoke self-incrimination. Uh, there was a public safety exception to that, but we argued that the invocation of the Fifth Amendment right went far beyond what was came in as the uh, invocation of the public safety exception. Paris states that Bonfanti should be retried because when he was arrested, he invoked the Fifth Amendment, but officers continued to question him and information from that questioning was used in court. 
The Attorney General's office argues there is no reason for a retrial due to the fact that the information was gathered from a line of questioning intended to locate and help Bonfanti's victims. They also argue there was so much evidence to incriminate Bonfanti that any information gathered after his invocation of the Fifth Amendment could be considered as supplemental. The Maine Supreme Court should have a written decision within the next 90 days. In Augusta, Devin Dagnall, ABC7 and Fox 22 News. Well, meanwhile, a man from western Maine is facing a slew of charges after he allegedly led police on a chase. Police say they spotted 38-year-old Joshua Kinzel speeding on Thursday morning on an ice-covered road. They claim he was traveling 30 miles over the posted speed limit in Rumford and refused to stop. Police say Kinzel sped up and tried to lose the officer and eventually pulled into a driveway to try to hide. Police found him quickly and said he had two guns in the vehicle that he wasn't even supposed to be driving because he had a suspended license. Kinzel is now facing numerous charges, including driving to endanger, eluding police, and being a prohibited person in possession of firearms. A proposed bill would raise the minimum wage for teachers over the next five years. Sponsored by Senator Teresa Purse of Cumberland, LD 1064 calls to raise the minimum salary for teachers throughout the state to $42,500 starting in 2024. Additionally, salaries for teachers would be increased by $2,500 every year until 2028. After 2028, the wage increases would then be based off of current salary multiplied by a cost of living adjustment. I think it's important to step back a little bit and uh, understand that over time we've been paying teacher, underpaying teachers just at a dramatically low level and it's time to really recognize that as a society. So they make far less than anyone else with, subs with the same amount of education and the same amount of work and we want to make sure that we recognize that. Pierce says if the bill reaches the Senate floor, she expects it will gain a lot of support. A bill that would increase the notice period for certain rent increases is moving its way through the legislature. The bill would require a landlord to provide 75 days notice when increasing a tenant's rent by 10% or more over the previous year's rent. Current law only requires 45 days notice for increases of any amount. The bill's sponsor, Representative Chris Kessler of South Portland, said, quote, rising rent prices across Maine are significantly contributing to our housing crisis. The anxiety that comes with a rent increase only enhances the very real concerns that many Mainers will no longer be able to afford to live close to their workplace and families. This legislation will provide extra time for tenants to determine the next best steps to finding a place to rent. Dozens of volunteers from across the state gathered at the State House to support Senator Jill Dusen's bill ending the sale of flavored tobacco products. Our Matthew Duroncic has the story. Today I met a fifth grader who was talking about the kids vaping in his bathroom. Um, and at fifth grade, kids should never be exposed to chemicals and uh, tobacco and nicotine and then have an addiction for the rest of their lives. Supporters of ending the sale of flavored tobacco products took action on Thursday, encouraging legislators to do the right thing and pass the bill. The sale of tobacco, which is basically poison for people, and especially young people, shouldn't shouldn't be allowed. And if, if we can stop this um, flavored tobacco, which really hooks little kids, we want to be able to do that. Should this bill become law, it would end the sale of flavored tobacco products statewide. More than 50 teachers, students, and health officials gathered on the third floor of the State House explained the significance of banning these harmful products. Um, it's been exciting to see people here. I think that uh, it reinforces that this bill is about a, um, a grassroots effort uh, to do something about the availability of these products to our kids. Seeing Thursday's turnout, Senator Dusan says she believes this rally will likely strengthen the case in passing her bill. I think it'll certainly increase the, uh, the chances of getting this bill all the way over the hump. This time we expect to get it over the hump and uh, folks, uh, regular folks, are an important piece of making that happen and making this effort happen in our state. Dusan says the bill will be discussed at the end of the month. However, there is not a specific date at this moment. In Augusta, Matthew Jurancic reporting for ABC7 and Fox 22 News.
several local communities. Uh, the, the biggest communities in Maine, including Bangor, have already enacted bans on the sale of flavored tobacco. This would make it statewide. And I think this was the natural progression of things, mm-hmm. too. If This this obviously couldn't mm-hmm. happen before municipalities did this. Yeah. So this was, it seems like, the natural next, next step. It's amazing how far we've come to. When I was a kid, we had candy cigarettes. They would give them to kids, yep. and then we'd pretend like we were smoking and things like that. They still and sell those, too. I th- do they really? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> but yeah, well, it seems like we're heading in the right direction. Right. Right, so. right. Seems like it. Yeah. All right, the time now is 8.10. Coming up next on Good Morning Maine, the inspirational story of a Portland police officer who says she's living a much happier life as a transgender woman. But first, another check of that weather forecast. A nice day ahead today. It will be partly cloudy with highs near 47 degrees. Mostly clear and quite chilly overnight. Lows dropping down to around 20. Tomorrow, it looks like a nice day heading into the Easter weekend. It will be mostly sunny and breezy. With highs near 42. Roto Rooter has served the greater Bangor area and beyond for 35 years, offering plumbing, hydro jetting, snaking, descaling, video inspection, and grease interceptor cleaning services. For all your residential and commercial clogs, call Roto Rooter today, 990 1234. Does your vehicle need a little more work? Have an odd sound coming from somewhere? Bring it over to Jackson's Automotive in Old Town. We have the best technicians and offer a fair price. We also accept all aftermarket protection plans. Now, if you're unable to drive your vehicle to us, we can help you get it here. Also, if you'd like to protect your vehicle for years to come, we offer Wool Wax Undercarriage Protection. We're located at 546 Main Street in Old Town. Give us a call at 827-2676. Hood is the cottage cheese cottage cheese lovers love. Start with our award-winning country style. It's delicious on its own or like this. That. Even. Sure. Plus, it's got more protein than hummus and less sugar than yogurt. Then there's Hood's flavors. We expertly blend in real fruit or savory herbs for an unbeatable taste combination you can't recreate at home. Mmm, now that's cottage cheese. Hood cottage cheese. Always good, always Hood. Oversharing can be spiritual. Name someone you had a romantic dream about. My minister. Praise the Lord, Pastor. It can be loving. You love to plant a big wet kiss on Steve Harvey's what? Lips. (laughs) Your lips ain't big enough for these lips. It can be wet. Name someone who has touched your bare body. The pool guy. Overshare with Family Feud. Weeknights at 7 on Fox 22. Welcome back to Good Morning Maine. A veteran officer in the Portland Police Department has come out as her true self. Julie Fitzgerald says she lived a lie for many years and is now proud to say she's transgender. Dan Lampriello explains the reaction she's received and how she hopes it will help others. For more than 20 years, Officer Julie Fitzgerald has patrolled the streets of Portland. It's a job she believes was her calling. I believe that's what path I was supposed to go. Fitzgerald joined law enforcement after retiring from the U.S. Air Force as an aircraft mechanic in the early 2000s, eager to make connections and continue public service. This is what I wanted to do when I got out because um, I enjoy helping people and, you know, getting that satisfaction. But getting that satisfaction hasn't always been easy. As you can see, she looks much different today than these photos from her past, something she spent much of her life trying to hide. I hid. I hid everything. I hid it through my 24 years in the Air Force, and I obviously hid it for 20 years here. Last October, Fitzgerald made what she calls the toughest decision of her life. I had to do it. Coming out as her true self, a woman. So I got to do this. I have to live my life. You know, I I was 62 years old and I'm living two lives. Why do I have to live that? But in a job like law enforcement, she wasn't sure how her fellow officers would react. I've never been scared in this job, but that was scary. Emotional and nervous. I had to tell whatever we have, 140 something people at different times. and, And the response I got was 
fabulous. Like people, I didn't even have to stop talking, and people were just like, you know, most of them thought I was going to tell them I had cancer, but uh, you know, I was just like, you know, they were just. You're, you're our brother. We love you. You know, you're, who cares? It was a level of acceptance the department's chief says he wasn't at all surprised by. Julie is part of the fabric of this department. And so to see the acceptance from our officers was really incredible uh, and continues to be incredible. You know, our goal is to support Julie as we just move forward. For Fitzgerald, that's all she was hoping for, respect for who she is. This doesn't change me. I'm the same person. A message she hopes will resonate with others in similar positions, especially at-risk youth who she often interacts with on patrol, that even in a job like hers, you can be yourself and be accepted. I am who I want to be, you know, and I'm proud of that. I'm proud of me and I'm proud of, yeah, and I'm proud of being transgender. And our thanks to her for sharing her story. Meanwhile, Maine's Committee on Transportation held a public hearing on Thursday on a bill to eliminate certain motor vehicle inspections. The proposed bill, sponsored by Representative Chad Perkins of Dover Foxcroft, would put an end to required yearly inspections for passenger vehicles registered here in Maine. However, the bill would still require inspections for vehicles prior to being purchased, as well as for commercial vehicles and fire trucks. Representative Perkins argues it's not necessary to have a vehicle inspected each year. During the hearing, Maine Policy Institute Director of Communications Jacob Pozik testified in support of that bill. Most accidents are caused by speeding, distracted driving, or drug or alcohol use. Yet the program persists in Maine and saps Mainers of millions every year for no clear or quantifiable health and safety benefit. The bill will be worked on in the Transportation Committee's next workshop session. Honda is recalling vehicles due to the risk of rust. The recall includes 563,000 CRV models from 2007 to 2011 in states where roads are regularly salted in the winter months. The company says road salt could cause the frame to corrode and possibly detach the rear trailing arm. Dealers will install a support brace or repair the rear frame for free if necessary. Honda says it has received about 61 complaints about the issue, but no reports of deaths or injuries. That's not surprising to no. me. Our, our salty roads are just really corrosive. I've lost several vehicles to the salt over yep. the years. You yep. know, so. Absolutely. All right, the time now is 8.17 after the break. It was a historic day for Tennessee politics in which two Democratic lawmakers were expelled. Details on that and more as Good Morning Maine continues. Up in Smoke Fireworks is family owned with a huge selection including Brothers and Showtime, Time Bandit and Black Hat brands. We will share our knowledge with you. Then go have a blast. blast. Up in Smoke Fireworks, 173 West Main Street, Searsport. Come try one of our daily specials at Pat's Pizza in Hamden. Tuesday, spaghetti or ziti with meatballs or sausage, only $5.50. Wednesday, large one-topping pizza, only $8.50. Thursday, get an oven-baked wrap for only $6. Friday is fish and fries for only $8. And Saturday, get a small one-item pizza with a fountain soda, only $8. Bring the family to Pat's Pizza, 662 Main Road, North Hamden. Here at Twin City Tire and Service, you will be working with industry professionals. We have ASE certified master technicians and certified tire and lube technicians. If we need your vehicle for a duration of time, we offer a complimentary shuttle service and can even offer a loaner vehicle. Being a client at Twin City Tire and Service means that we will treat you right. This includes a three-year, 36,000-mile warranty on mechanical repairs. We also provide you with one year of complimentary roadside assistance. Come see us today at Twin City Tire and Service in Brewer. Hi, this is Jason. And this is Jessica from Tossie's Checkout. A family-owned business located in Glenburn. Inviting you to come experience that welcoming hometown feeling when you're visiting our neck of the woods. You can always expect tasty treats. Pizza. Spirits. Familiar faces. And quality gasoline. With summer approaching and Push All Lake nearby. We look forward to seeing your smiling faces. Come, come check, check us out. out. Up in Smoke Fireworks is family owned with a huge selection including Brothers and Showtime, Time Bandit and Black Hat brands. We will share our knowledge with you. Then go have a blast. blast. Up in Smoke Fireworks, 173 West Main Street, Searsport.
It was an historic day in Tennessee politics. Republicans expelled two Democratic lawmakers, but not all of their efforts were successful. Fox's Jonathan Hunt reports the latest. We need action. What began as a rally for gun control has now cut short the careers of two state lawmakers in Tennessee. The drama unfolded a week ago when a trio of Democrats joined a gun control protest on the floor of the state house. They used a bullhorn to join with protesters following the Nashville school shooting in which six people, including three nine-year-old children, were killed. The lawmakers' actions broke House rules of decorum, and Republicans used their supermajority to try to oust all of them. He and two other representatives effectively conducted a mutiny on March the 30th of 2023 in this very chamber. Justin Jones is one of the so-called Tennessee Three. He was the first to be expelled. I will stand with the people out in this rotunda every week if I have to. They can't expel our movement. Representative Justin Pearson was also expelled. A lot of them I know are upset about the anti-democratic behavior of this white supremacist-led state legislature. But Gloria Johnson survived by just one vote. Protesters swarmed the Capitol when the votes took place. Expulsion is incredibly rare. It's only happened twice since the 1800s. The fact that this vote is happening is shocking, undemocratic, and without precedent. The expelled lawmakers are eligible to run again in a special election, which has to be held to fill the now open seats. In Los Angeles, Jonathan Hunt, Fox News. The time now is 821. Let's get a full look at that weather forecast. All righty, Craig and Emma, thank you very much. Your full weather forecast sponsored by the More True team of Better Homes and Gardens Real Estate. They work throughout the state of Maine serving both buyers and sellers with a focus on the greater Bangor area. Here we go. Wind advisory is posted at least through later this afternoon at about 2 p.m. or so. Wind gusts up to around 40 miles per hour or so. We'll be expected from time to time, so we'll need to be careful with this as it does develop. Further down to the south, this right here is the gale warning posted through about 2 a.m. as we head towards your Saturday the small crowd advisory here at least through 2 a.m. as well. You can notice a little sh different shades of color right there. So we have gale warnings right about in this area and further off towards the south and west from that is where that small crowd advisory is located. Wave heights aren't too ridiculous. Yeah, we might see these increasing later today with some of those gusty winds. Right now, right around two to three feet according to some of the buoys out there. So rather calm for now, but expect those to increase as we get some gusty winds going throughout the region today. But for now, we're just watching some clouds moving through. Looks like we did have some rain moving through last night and the parts of very early this morning. So now all of that has since gotten out of here. So we're looking pretty good to start things off. Just a mixture of some clouds and sunshine will be the general idea. Here's our next little weak wave of energy located right about in here. That will allow you know, some snow flurries in the northern parts of the state today. But I think for us, though, we'll be looking pretty good as we'll be well under a party cloudy sky and mixture of clouds and sunshine and gusty winds will be the overall idea. Future cast showing those flurries further off towards the north. Otherwise, mixture of clouds and sunshine for everyone else further down towards the south. But later on tonight, we will remain mostly clear, so looking pretty decent out there later on tonight. By tomorrow, though, it tries to get a few clouds in here. I'm not quite sold on that solution. If we notice any clouds, it may not be as aggressive. I do think we'll still hold on to a good amount of sunshine for most of your Saturday. By Saturday night, the parts of Sunday will be looking pretty good as the clouds break up yet again, revealing a good amount of sunshine. We're in a nice drying pattern, though, with a mixture of clouds and sunshine, the general idea. On top of that, some gusty winds we'll have to deal with as well, reaching up to around 30 to 35 miles per hour, even close to 40 miles per hour in a few spots. And even though the winds will remain gusty through Saturday, it won't be as bad as what we're seeing today. Gusts tomorrow can reach up to around 20 to 25 miles per hour at best. Let's talk temperatures real quick. Our average high is 49 degrees. We'll be in the 40s today and tomorrow, lower 50s Sunday, but a sharp warm up starting Monday all the way through Thursday, maybe 70s as we head towards Thursday. We'll have to wait and see how that plays out as we get closer. But otherwise, so upper 40s today, partly cloudy and windy. West wind getting up to about 40 miles per hour. By tonight, 21 degrees, mostly clear and still windy out there. Northwest wind getting up to about 30 miles per hour. For tomorrow, lower 40s, mostly sunny and breezy. Northwest wind getting up to about 25 miles per hour. Alrighty, here's a look at your extended forecast sponsored by the More True team of Better Homes and Gardens Real Estate. We'll be mostly sunny on Easter Sunday with highs in the lower 50s. Lower 60s on Monday with a mostly sunny sky. Mostly cloudy on Tuesday, highs in the mid 60s.
Celebrate Ram Truck Month at Quirk Ram in Bangor and Belfast. Lease the reliable Ram 1500 Classic Warlock Quad Cab for $4.29 per month. It's your Ram truck. Find it at Quirk. AC Electric Corp. is seeking a skilled AC-DC electric motor technician for its Bangor Motor Shop. This position involves disassembly, testing, repairing, and reassembly of electric motors and equipment. AC Electric Corp. is willing to train someone with five years of auto or equipment mechanic experience. AC Electric Corp. offers 401k matching, paid time off, health and dental insurance, along with a great work environment. If interested in applying, please call Tina at 945-9487. NexGuard is the flea and tick protection that's number one with vets. Your vet trusts it for her patients and her own dog. Plus, its delicious beef flavor is number one with dogs. Use with caution in dogs with a history of seizures or neurologic disorders. Ask your vet about NexGuard. Oh, that feels so good. What a sweetheart. I'm so lucky. These socks are so soft. And her feet don't smell? These would be perfect for hunting season. Moisture wicking. Odor resistant, hypoallergenic, softer than cashmere, and warmer than wool. Get your alpaca socks and more at the Blue Alpaca. Feel the difference. Hey babe, can I borrow these socks? Who's got a motive? Accused is TV's most captivating new crime show. And now you can watch it anytime. Accused, all new Tuesdays on Fox and watch anytime on Hulu. It's your journey. Own every mile in an available H-Track all-wheel drive Hyundai SUV. Lease a 2023 Hyundai Santa Fe SE for $339 per month. It's your Hyundai. Find it at Quark. Tensions increasing by the day between the United States and China. A U.S. congressional delegation is currently in Taiwan. This after a visit for Taiwan's president Wednesday to the U.S. Fox News congressional correspondent Aisha Hasni is in Taipei with the details. That is an act of Russian. House Foreign Affairs Chairman Michael McCall standing next to Taiwan's vice president as he calls out China for announcing it will stop and inspect ships in parts of the Taiwan Strait for three days. The same three days during which McCall is leading a bipartisan delegation through Taiwan. Hours before their plane even touched down in Taipei, Taiwan's defense ministry discovered three People's Liberation Army Navy ships encircling the island. McCall telling Fox China better think twice before escalating tensions further. We know that they, are, they have certain plans. Uh, whether they carry those out, I don't know. Uh, but I think that would be a, a very uh, unfortunate mistake on the part of the Chinese Communist Party. What are those plans? Can you elaborate? I can't, I can't explain that. As China ramps up pressure on Taiwan, it's also flexing its economic muscle to push America to the side. The White House responding to Beijing's anti-U.S. deals on oil with Russia and Saudi Arabia, and China working with Brazil to move off the U.S. dollar. We know we're in a strategic competition with China. Um, and we have made it clear to Chinese officials, we are unabashed and unafraid uh, to make it clear to the Chinese that we're going to do what we have to do to protect our national security interests. And again, this is no time to be in partnership with Vladimir Putin. As life goes on in Taipei, there is a looming fear war could be coming. If something happened, we would have to fight, right? Yeah, I'll go. You ready for that? Yes. What's still unclear, though, whether they'll get any help from U.S. troops. And Chairman McCall tells Fox that decision will be made by the American people. What this delegation is willing to talk about is weapons sales, and they will do that with President Tsai when she returns to Taiwan. Well, meanwhile, the United Nations says more than 8.1 million Ukrainians have become refugees since Russia invaded Ukraine. More than 5 million people have applied for temporary resident status in nearby Western European countries. Russia began its war with Ukraine in February of last year. And as of February of this year, at least 8,000 Ukraine civilians have been killed since the war began. Over 13,000 have been injured. Calling all Russian nationals, Uncle Sam wants you. The FBI is said to be actively recruiting Russians as tensions with the nation escalate, particularly over the invasion of Ukraine. Fox News correspondent David Spunt has the story. 
Вы хотите изменить свое будущее? The FBI openly recruiting Russians to give up important information. In a new video shared with millions around the globe on Twitter, Facebook and Google, bureau officials speak directly to Russian citizens, expatriates, even spies looking to break free. Do you want to change your future? The FBI values you. The FBI can help you, but only you have the power to take the first step. The ad campaign comes as Russia continues to wage war in Ukraine, more than a year after the initial invasion. U.S. officials say Vladimir Putin is as isolated as he's been since coming to power more than 20 years ago. It's a very tight, uh, clear message to any Russian who might be interested in volunteering uh, to the United States government. It's meant for Russian intelligence officers. And the message is repeated numerous times. Do you want to change your future in Russian? Sources familiar with the ad tell Fox News that the FBI asking Russians for help isn't new. The agency ran this still image ad last year with a photograph of Putin. But this year, the bureau decided a video was more effective. The ad encourages Russian people to also come speak in person to the FBI Washington field office and tell a security official that you have confidential information related to Russian intelligence or defense matters. The FBI Intelligence Division will contact you. But there are concerns about double agents. Officials within the FBI tell Fox News all information will be thoroughly screened. They just want to get as many tips as possible. Well, in other news, the Israeli military launches airstrikes in the Gaza Strip. The strike setting off several loud explosions in Gaza City. The Israeli military says they hit a pair of tunnels and two weapons manufacturing locations. This comes after two days of fighting at Jerusalem's most sensitive holy site as Israel celebrates the Passover holiday. At least two people were wounded. Similar clashes led to an 11-day war between Israel and Hamas back in 2021. Still to come here on the second half of our show. Can you imagine going to a store and finding that most of its employees are automated machines? Well, that's exactly what Walmart is planning for many of its locations, warehouse locations, that is. We'll have details on that and more as Good Morning Maine continues. Make the most of your waterfront with a Shoremaster dock system from Hammond Lumber Company. Shoremaster docks and boat lifts have been the trusted choice for decades. With Shoremaster, you get the expert product knowledge and first-class service you've come to expect from Hammond Lumber. Hammond is the country's largest stocking Shoremaster dealer, so you won't wait to get the dock system you want. Hammond delivers from any of their locations across Maine and New Hampshire with professional service after the sale. Your dream waterfront begins with Shoremaster from Hammond Lumber Company. For over 75 years, Arians has been blowing away the competition. Arian snow throwers simply overpower other brands. See for yourself by watching the screen and then head to Jim Small Engines in Arrington, where these fabulous high-throwing Arian snow throwers are on sale at unbelievable prices. Jim Small Engines brings 40 years' experience in sales and service, and Jim knows that Arian snow throwers are the best, but supplies are limited. So watch the screen and take advantage of the great sale prices on Arian snow throwers now at Jim Small Engines, Snow's Corner Road, Arrington. You're watching Fox 22, Bangor. Welcome back, everyone. Today is Friday, April 7th, 2023. It's also National Beer Day. Ooh, very fitting. It's a yeah. Friday. I'm glad it's not a Monday. <laughs> beer is the world's most widely consumed alcoholic drink, and it comes in hundreds of types, flavors, and proofs. It's really cool now. I mean, depending on if you drink or not, there are also really cool non-alcoholic mm -hmm. beer options, IPAs, ales, all sorts of very similar stuff if you make that switch or you want something different. But I know the options generally overwhelm me personally. Yeah. There's too many options. I find the one I like and stick with it. Yes. Yeah. Yep, I think a lot of people are that way. People have been making beer for over 5,000 years, including Egyptians who used it in a number of religious ceremonies. In fact, the oldest recorded recipe we know of is for beer. More than 35 billion gallons of beer are produced worldwide each year. And I'd say a lot of that is right here in Maine. Yeah, we make a lot, a lot of beer here we, in Maine. We, we like our beer here <laughs> yes. in Maine, that's for sure. It's yeah. like we got cold, long winters. Yeah, <laughs> you need something. So. Yeah. This is actually actually, actually uh, National Do No Housework Day, too. So That's funny, because I was going to get 
a couple beers and do housework. Well, you can do what you want to, but this will be your excuse not to do it if, okay. you, if you don't want it's to. It's a Friday. So. Hey, that's a good day yeah. for that as well. Have a few beers. Very cool. All right. On this day in history, back in 1827, Englishman John Walker invented modern-day wooden matches that create a flame through friction. Hmm. And Another big main industry. Sorry to cut you off. But yeah, I, it's okay. I said this in one of our previous shows, but in post-World War II, mm -hmm. a lot of men came back and there was a need for wood for matches. Yeah. So they they were busy in the lumber industry back in Maine when after World War II. Turning it into matchsticks. Yeah. I think they did that up until not too long ago, actually, right, some right. of the manufacturing plants. Yeah, went all, all over the world. Yeah. In 1940, Booker T. Washington became the first black person pictured on a U.S. postage stamp. In 1969, the Internet was born as research agency, a research agency, was awarded a contract to build the precursor to today's World Wide Web. Hmm. And finally, in 2003, U.S. forces circled the city of Baghdad, which led to the fall of Saddam Hussein's regime just two days later. And I remember watching it on TV. Every every little facet of that war was covered on TV, you right. know, unlike any before. So Right, and depending on how old you are, it may seem like yesterday or it may seem a, like a yeah. while ago. Seems like yesterday to me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm getting old. Yeah, right. yeah. I understand. All right, today's birthdays include John Oates from Hall & Oates. He's 75 today. Actor Russell Crowe is 59. Movie director Francis Ford Coppola is 84. And this is also also the birthday of jazz great Billy Holiday, who was born on this day in 1915. I mean, on that note, she, I, I can't remember when the first um, music of hers started coming out, but she would have been kind of a prohibition era yeah, in a way. A star, yeah. which makes it very fitting for National Beer Day. Right. You can listen to some Billy and, and have a beer. And do some housework if you want to. <laughs> if you want to. If you don't yeah. want to, it's all good. Yeah, so. I know, because may, it may be a good day, too, mm -hmm. actually, because it's going to be so beautiful yeah, you the next get out. few days We haven't had sun for a while, so yeah. get outside and enjoy the sun. Yeah. Maybe rake up some leaves or something right. like that. Right, but yeah. plenty of outdoor work, yeah. maybe, if you do that instead. Yeah, and beer. <laughs> right. Here's Devin Biggs with the forecast. <laughs> And thank you very much, Craig and Emma. Happy Friday. Your first weather forecast sponsored by the More True team of Better Homes and Gardens Real Estate. They work throughout the state of Maine serving both buyers and sellers with a focus on the greater Bangor area. All right, let's get things rolling out there this morning. We have a wind advisory posted across some parts of the state. This will last until later this afternoon at about 2 p.m. Wind gusts up to around 40 miles per hour or so. Will be possible, though, as we'll be watching for some gusty winds and a system that will be passing through. Otherwise, along the shoreline as a result of the winds. We have some more alerts issued. Gale warnings posted through Saturday morning at around 2 a.m. for this little shade of pink right about in there. Maybe a little bit purplish as well. Small crowd advisory until 2 a.m. as well for everyone else. So, again, once we head towards later on this afternoon and parts of tomorrow morning, things will start to relax. On land, though, we don't have any precipitation moving through. The northern parts of the state might notice a few snow flurries today, but everyone else once we get closer toward Bangor will not see much of anything. They'll be under a part cloudy sky for us today, so a mixture of clouds and sunshine, and just the wind that we'll have to deal with. A lot of the activity is further down to the south. This is kind of a second little weak wave of energy, and most of this will stay further off towards the north. Future cats for today show some of those flurries further off towards the north. I don't think they'll reach as far as south as it might indicate, but we'll really start to clear out later on tonight. So our early forecast for the rest of the morning and afternoon period, showing a mixture of clouds and sunshine, and yes, windy as well. Temperatures in the 40s. Your full five-day forecast is coming Coming up, Craig and Emma. Thank you, Devin. All right, let's take a look at that community calendar for events going on today, tomorrow, and Sunday.
stuff going on. It's Easter, it's Easter weekend, so there's all sorts of um, Easter egg hunts and um, events at churches and stuff. I know that one in Dover Foxcroft seems like a, a big Lots one. Lots of kids turn out. Right, yeah. but there's plenty more. He head to Facebook events if you want to check out your local church or anything in the local area. All right. All right, um, when we return, Tyler Cruz will have the latest with sports. We'll also hear about some special opportunities for volunteers with the Bangor Historical Society. A special guest will join us. Yep. Don't go away. Hello, Maine. This is Steve McKay. It's a wintry mix out there, but pockets of orange are standing out against the white blanket of snow throughout the state. Next Home Experience is listing and selling homes just like yours. Get looped and get sold with Next Home Experience. When you've experienced fire and smoke damage in your home, when pipes break and you have water everywhere, when you're concerned about your family's health because of mold, you need a friendly face to take care of it all. You need the friendly faces of Bouchard Cleaning and Restoration. We're just a click or call away. Whatever life throws at you, Bouchard Cleaning and Restoration is here for you. Bouchard Cleaning and Restoration. You keep the memories, we'll handle the rest. Here at Black Fly Coffee Company, quality will never be compromised. No matter what type of coffee you choose, whether it's hot, iced, or frozen, you can feel confident that our products are the highest caliber. We're here to assist you with your morning cup of joe, along with your mid-afternoon pick-me-up. And while here, grab a pastry for a snack. We always have fresh pastries available from a local business right here in the area. We look forward to meeting you soon. On the next Last Man Standing. How's college going, honey? Oh, it's not as much fun as I'd hoped. Like, everybody's so focused on reading and studying and learning. It's rough starting over in a new environment. Life is so unfair to pretty young 18-year-old girls. Mandy joins a popular sorority. Sister! Sister! And becomes the life of the party. Whoa, whoa, what are you, what are you dressed as? Oh, farm girl. E-I-E-I, -E -I, no. Last Man Standing. This afternoon, starting at 4 on Fox 22. Looking for your dream home? Contact a Next Homey today and see what's available right now. Sellers, get ready to get looped and get sold. With Next Home Experience, we have your buyers. The Bristol Dirt Race. Chaos will ensue. The NASCAR Cup Series, Bristol, Easter Sunday on Fox. Welcome back in, everyone. Thank you for staying with us. Let's start with some lacrosse. Brewer Boys Lacrosse is in just their fourth season as a program, and they're coming off of one of their best springs in history, winning their first playoff game ever and looking to build on that success heading into this year. Ryan Sudall has the story. It was a great step for our program, especially to show these younger kids like how the game is played and how we can bring it to this area. After being a program for just four years, Brewer Boys Lacrosse took home their first playoff win in history in last year's Class B State Tournament. With us being somewhat of a new program, uh, as far as Northern Maine Lacrosse goes, first win always a good one. But that Southern competition is stiff. The Witches lost their next game in the quarterfinal round against York 17-2. to It makes us realize how good the teams down south are and it makes us get prepared throughout the year working in practices. You know, it's never fun to lose a game, especially as competitors. We want to strive to be better than what we were last year, and that's what we're going for. And they have the talent to do so. The Witches have most of last year's starting lineup returning, including the team's top goal scorer, senior captain Ryder Goodwin. Ryder is an amazing scorer, by far our best player, good passer. I mean, he's taken this program under his wing in the last couple of years. He's a dog. He's a guy we all look to when we need a goal in a big game. And it doesn't just end with the upperclassmen. We had some freshmen last year that played a lot, and they're sophomores now. I think experience is where we're at above other teams around us. All in all, the Witches look to improve on their 10-2 regular season and eventually be able to show those teams down south what Northern Maine Lacrosse is all about. Our goal is just to go undefeated and see how far we can make it, hopefully go farther than we did last year in the playoffs. We can beat up on a couple of Northern Maine teams all we want, but we want to walk down south and show them that we can hang, really. In Brewer, I'm Ryan Sudall, ABC7, Fox 22 Sports. 
Thanks for that, Ryan. Opening day next Thursday, Brewer versus Bangor should be a good one. Let's uh, let's go to some baseball now, and we will head to Husson. After dropping one to the University of Southern Maine on Tuesday, the Eagles had one more non-conference tune-up before NAC play begins against Umpy. Husson also trying for their first home win of the year against the Owls. We're going to start in the first inning. Akira Warren at bat for Husson. He rips a grounder into left field. Kobe Rogerson is going to round third. He's going to come in to score. That makes it one to nothing. Husson early to the fifth now. Tyler Michaud at home at the plate. That one gets through the hole. Colin Marshall scores and Warren follows four to nothing. Eagles in the first, but. Umpy would crawl back into it. 5-3 to three in the seventh. Peyton Jones with the bases loaded. Hits it hard towards short. That allows Joey Lippo to score. It's a one-run ball game. But a couple of batters later, Anthony Cyril's trying to drive home the tying run. Tanner Evans scoops this slow roller. He's going to hurl it to first. They, he is out to end the inning, and Husson would hold on. They win 6-4. Let's stay with some baseball now. The Sea Dogs opened up the doors to Hadlock Field and painted the lines for their opening day, hosting the Binghamton Rumble Ponies. On the mound was Red Sox pitcher Garrett Whitlock making a rehab start. Whitlock went six innings, allowing just one hit and striking out eight. That one hit being a home run in the fifth inning. And in the stands, fans filled up the stadium for the first time this year. And with minor league baseball, the experience in the stands and as a fan is really what it's all about. You've been waiting for a season to start for a while in pretty much any sport, and it's nice for it to finally start happening. Absolutely. You got your winter hat on, though. It's kind of baseball yeah. weather in the Northeast, <laughs> yeah. though, right? Yeah. My daughter got, a, got these tickets for Christmas for us because we've been coming here for so many years. All right, let's stay on the diamond here. We will just kick it over to Detroit. Red Sox in action on Thursday, hoping to avoid dropping four in a row. They're playing the Tigers, and it's sale day for those who celebrate. Looking for a better start than last time out. Bottom of the second, he serves up the sinker to Jake Rogers. Rogers gets all of that ball. That's over the left field fence, and it's 2 to nothing Detroit early. 3-1 to one now. Raffi Devers at the dish. He gets a high fastball. You can't really throw that pitch to Raffi. He takes this one. Apo Taco. That one is gone. Sox within a run. And here comes Raffi again in the sixth. He absolutely unloads on this pitch. That's going to go off the wall in dead center. Alex Verdugo hustles around to score. That ties the game. A few batters later, here's Adam Duvall. He's had a heck of a start to his Sox career, and he keeps it going. Belts this one. That is a three-run shot to make it 6-3. to three. The Sox go on to win by that score. Sale gets his first W of the season. Red Sox are now 3-4. and four. Always good news when the Sox get a win. That's all the time we have for sports. Be right back after the break. Dirt Road Acres, your number one trusted dispensary. Dirt Road Acres provides outstanding patient consulting and services to Eastern and Central Maine. Located at the corner of Route 9 and Route 7 in Dixmont. Stop by and see Jen or one of the girls today. Now offering delivery. Max True Value Hardware in Unity is the best option year-round for all of your home improvement projects. Backed by one of the leading paint manufacturers in the United States, Max will color match or custom mix any color for you. We care about your pets too, carrying all of the essential pet products in our store. During those cold winters, we take the extra step to help with wood pellets ready to load on site. We also fill all size propane cylinders year-round. Max True Value Hardware, we take pride in serving our community. Let us know how we can help you today. Are you considering buying a new home? A home inspection is a major step in the home buying process. Knowing the current condition of your future home is very important. From simple DIY repairs to major issues that could cost thousands down the road. Not only can TJ inspect your property, but he is also a licensed contractor. Give him a call today at 210-5000 for a free inspection quote. From the land to the sea, Chase's Family Restaurant is the place to be. Are you looking for a place to unwind after a long day? Then come check out our Hideaway Lounge. With a bar that's both upbeat and laid back. And it's the perfect atmosphere for anyone who wants to unwind after work. Or kick it up for the weekend with daily drink specials and a full dinner menu. You can fill up on a good time any night of the week. Thank you for being a part of our family. Here at Chase's Family Restaurant. 
Dirt Road Acres, your number one trusted dispensary. Dirt Road Acres provides outstanding patient consulting and services to Eastern and Central Maine. Located at the corner of Route 9 and Route 7 in Dixmont. Stop by and see Jen or one of the girls today. Now offering delivery. Welcome back to Good Morning Maine. We're here with Matt Bishop from the Maine His or Bangor Historical Society. Matt, thanks for joining us today. Hey, thanks for having me on again. Of course. So you're here to talk about there's a cool event for volunteers going on Tuesday, right? Yeah, uh, Tuesday night from 5 to 7, we're opening up the Hill House to have volunteers or prospective volunteers uh, to come in and learn volunteer opportunities as part of tour guides, house docents, but also we're looking on always filling up uh, some of the committees that we can have to help support the historical society. Yeah. Uh, we're getting to that point where we got a lot of tourists coming up yep. and to have the Hill House open again. So it's a great time just to have a little meet and greet, very informal. If people just want to show up for 10, 15 minutes, if they come and want to talk to us for two hours, that's okay too. Yeah. Uh, but just really a lot of great things coming up for this coming season. What's a house docent? Before we move on, I'm uh, so a uh, house docent is a tour guide, but oh, okay. they will guide the uh, visitors through the house itself. Okay, so it's, kind of a fancier name than just a tour guide. Gotcha, gotcha. It's simple enough. Um, no, I mean I was struck by the diversity of opportunities for people who'd be looking for this. I was interested. You guys need somebody to garden and do general, just like groundskeeping as well. It seemed like that was the case. Yeah, um, we'll take any and all anybody that's willing to help out. We yeah. have a nice little piece of property right on uh, corner of Union and High Street. There's a lot of big trees right around, so we're always cleaning up and just to get the gardens really where they need to be for the year for all of the guests to come and enjoy. Gotcha. What is the mission of the Bangor Historical Society? I think we know what it is, but what, what's the purpose of something like um, this? The official mission is to protect, preserve, and share the history of Bangor in the region. But, I mean, to really bring it down to it, it's sharing those personal stories. Like yeah. anybody can really talk about the specifics and reading from the history books, but mm -hmm. it's kind of having those, oh, you know, I've lived in Bangor for 30 years, I have stories to share. Uh, a lot of people come to us and they say, oh yeah, well, you're the historical society. Where should I go to eat? Where mm -hmm. should I go and see? Where should I, which preserve should I go and walk in? Mm. Right. So it's, it's really disseminating a lot of the information uh, for the region. And as far as opportunities for the volunteers, are there opportunities to learn and to do archiving work and to, and to just learn more history? What's yep. that like? Um, so we have a large collection, thousands of documents. Uh, many of them, if you go on our website, you can view. Cool. Uh, but just a small percentage have been able to been scanned and put in. And transcription is something when we talk about it's it's very difficult because of not all of us can read cursive extremely well anymore. Or even just uh, the old print newspapers. Yeah, it's so yeah. hard to see. So um, scanning projects uh, for photos and for documents. Uh, we always have people asking, hey, do you have any history on my house or genealogical research? I've and come to the Historical Society for that. Yeah. It's, you never know what people are going to be asking. I had uh, a gentleman that called the other day and was just like, I, I think I found another one of Bangor's older racetracks. Wow. So it's, yeah. I haven't had a chance to delve into it yet, but it's just like, okay, I'm putting that on my list to do because that's really cool mm -hmm. if it's still surviving. And um, there's just so much of history in this area. I mean, our, our city is just really, really blessed for, I mean, being as old as it is, right. but to just have all of the cool things that that's happened over the years. Absolutely. I think it's always good to remind people, Bangor was the lumber capital of the world. We were the lumber yeah, capital. Right. So that means coming along with that, there's endless things that you can learn about the city. Yep. And I'm sure there's endless jobs for people too. Aside from this event coming up on Tuesday, what are you guys gearing up for after that? Yeah, uh, so later on in April, on the 27th, we're doing kind of our traditional fire of 1911 cool. talk and presentation. Uh, April 30th, 1911, uh, fire started down on Broad Street in downtown that really destroyed half of downtown Bangor. And we, as we walk through it now, you see a lot of buildings rebuilt in 1911, 1912, mm -hmm. and 1913. Right. So it tells us how we got there from here. Uh, that one's going to be over at Rise, co-working and collaboration space located right on Main Street. Hmm. Uh, another really historical building because it's an older house, but it's also one of those buildings that's been a bunch of different restaurants and another organizations. A lot of people will remember it as the old Seguinos building. Mm -hmm. uh, so 
there's a lot, we, we, we find ways to get food involved into a lot of these. So oh, I love that. We, we like might that. not yeah. have it here, but it's like, oh yeah, no, it's an old restaurant. Awesome. But, um, and then we are going to be having, uh, we're bringing back our mystery night. Okay. And we're going to have these ones for college students only. So you're just going to provide a uh, student ID. We'll have all of that information on our website shortly. Okay. What's the, what's the website? Uh, the website is bangorhistoricalsociety.org. And okay. you can find so many neat things on the website too. I go there every now and then myself just to look like at the old pictures and things like that. Yeah. The website, the yeah. Facebook page. Uh, mm -hmm. We are on Instagram now. So awesome. uh, whichever your social media preference is, mm -hmm. um, you can definitely see some great pictures, some great facts. And uh, leading up, yeah, the house is going to open Memorial Day weekend cool. for the season. We have walking tours that are going to be starting in June. And some other really big events. I'm not at liberty to say what it is yet, but we have a big signature event planned for the fall. Good. And just a tease for that. It looks like we're running out of time. Coming in. We're running out of time, so we'll have to have you back for that stuff. But happy Matt, to come back. Thank you for joining us this morning. Thank you. Of course, we'll send it over to Devin Biggs for our full weather forecast. All righty, Craig and Emma, thank you very much. Your full weather forecast sponsored by the More True team of Better Homes and Gardens Real Estate. They work throughout the state of Maine, serving both buyers and sellers with a focus on the greater Bangor area. Here we go. Wind advisory is posted at least through later this afternoon at about 2 p.m. or so. Wind gusts up to around 40 miles per hour or so will be expected from time to time, so we'll need to be careful with this as it does develop. Further down to the south, this right here is a gale warning posted through about 2 a.m. as we head towards your Saturday the small crowd advisory here at least through 2 a.m. as well. You can notice a little sh different shades of color right there. So we have gale warnings right about in this area and further off towards the south and west from that is where that small crowd advisory is located. Wave heights aren't too ridiculous. Yeah, we might see these increasing later today with some of those gusty winds. Right now, right around two to three feet according to some of the buoys out there. So rather calm for now, but expect those to increase as we get some gusty winds going throughout the region today. But for now, we're just watching some clouds moving through. Looks like we did have some rain moving through last night and the parts of very early this morning. So now all of that has since gotten out of here. So we're looking pretty good to start things off. Just a mixture of some clouds and sunshine will be the general idea. Here's our nice little weak wave of energy located right about in here. That will allow again some snow flurries in the northern parts of the state today. But I think for us, though, we'll be looking pretty good. This will be well under a party cloudy sky and mixture of clouds and sunshine and gusty winds will be the overall idea. Future cast showing those flurries further off towards the north. Otherwise, mixture of clouds and sunshine for everyone else further down towards the south but later on tonight we will remain mostly clear so looking pretty decent out there later on tonight by tomorrow though it tries to get a few clouds in here i'm not quite sold on that solution if you notice any clouds it may not be as aggressive i do think we'll still hold on to a good amount of sunshine for most of your saturday by saturday night the parts of sunday will be looking pretty good as the clouds break up yet again revealing a good amount of sunshine we're in a nice drying pattern though with a mixture of clouds and sunshine the general idea on top of that some gusty winds we'll have to deal with as well reaching up to around 30 to 35 miles per hour, even close to 40 miles per hour in a few spots. And even though the winds will remain gusty through Saturday, it won't be as bad as what we're seeing today. Gust tomorrow can reach up to around 20 to 25 miles per hour at best. Let's talk temperatures real quick. Our average high is 49 degrees. We'll be in the 40s today and tomorrow, lower 50s Sunday, but a sharp warm up starting Monday all the way through Thursday, maybe 70s as we head towards Thursday. We'll have to wait and see how that plays out as we get closer. But otherwise, so upper 40s today, partly cloudy and windy. West wind getting up to about 40 miles per hour. By tonight, 21 degrees, mostly clear and still windy out there. Northwest wind getting up to about 30 miles per hour. For tomorrow, lower 40s, mostly sunny and breezy. Northwest wind getting up to about 25 miles per hour. Alrighty, here's a look at your extended forecast sponsored by the More True team of Better Homes and Gardens Real Estate. We'll be mostly sunny on Easter Sunday with highs in the lower 50s. Lower 60s on Monday with a mostly sunny sky. Mostly cloudy on Tuesday, highs in the mid 60s.